You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 22nd of August and I'm Roland from Milford. Australian wage inflation data was released for the June quarter, with wages growing 2.6% for the year, slightly below 2.8% expected. Private wages grew 2.7% and public sector wages grew 2.4% for the year. This is quite a soft print considering record tightness in labour markets. However, digging into the detail, there were some snippets of strength. In the private sector, those who did receive a pay rise saw their wages increase 3.8%, which is the highest since June 2012. Also, only 14% of workers received a pay rise in the June quarter, whereas about 42% are expected to see a wage increase in the September quarter. This should therefore see an acceleration in wage prices because of this, but also because of minimum wage increases. Australian employment data was also released, which like the wage data was weaker than the market expected. Total employment fell by 41,000, with full-time falling by a decent 87,000, partially offset by an increase in part-time workers. This was a strange survey period, as the Australian Bureau of Statistics highlighted more sampling variants than usual due to heightened annual leave. Despite this decline in total people employed, the unemployment rate fell to 3.4%, one of the tightest readings on record. This was driven by a decline in the participation rate as few Australians looked for work. Going across the ditch, the Reserve Bank in New Zealand raised interest rates by 50 basis points to 3%, in line with market expectations. They also indicated the official cash rate may have to reach 4.1% to get inflation under control, higher than the 3.95% they previously highlighted. In the UK, inflation in July increased 0.6% month-on-month, taking the annual inflation rate to 10.1%. In Germany, the producer price index was released, which also showed no slowing in the inflationary pressures, with the index increasing 5.3% month-on-month and a whopping 37% for the year. This generally leads consumer inflation, as it's the prices manufacturers sell their goods for, which naturally flows through to the consumer. Natural gas prices continue to grind back to 14-year highs as the energy crisis in Europe continues to deteriorate. Natural gas prices are up 141% for the year and 17% for the month. We also had Russia announce their key gas pipeline to Europe, Nord Stream 1, will be taken offline for unscheduled maintenance for three days, increasing pressures on Europe. Turning to equity news, we are in the middle of Australian reporting season and hence it was a very busy week, but I'll just focus on a few key names. Car sales released their full-year results on Monday, coming in line with consensus and the guidance they gave at their capital raise. The focus on the call was on guidance, where they provided qualitative commentary, expecting good revenue and EBITDA growth. This historically has translated into high single-digit or low double-digit percentages. BHP, otherwise known as the Big Australian, released very strong full-year results, beating market expectations across most key metrics. The biggest surprise was the strength of the cash flows, with free cash flow of US $24.3 billion. Now, it was somewhat boosted by $3 billion of deferred tax, but nonetheless, it puts their balance sheet in a very healthy position. And it also allowed them to raise their final dividend, where they will look to return US $8.9 billion to shareholders. Seek also released a strong result, coming roughly in line with market expectations, but the big surprise came from the guidance, which was well ahead. Seek guided to revenue and EBITDA that were about 9% and 3% ahead of consensus, respectively, but this included heightened OPEX, which will fall out in a couple years, and so backing that out, EBITDA was actually 15% ahead. Despite the strong results and guidance, some of CEO Ian Narev's comments around the uncertainty in the macro landscape and some risk to the downside should things deteriorate saw Seek fall 6% on the day. Temple and Webster, the online furniture retailer, released a solid result, but again, guidance was the focus, and they highlighted higher margins and hence profitability than the market expected, which saw the share price rally 30% on the day. Temple and Webster was quite heavily short-sold leading into this result, so it was a classic short squeeze. Finally, CleanAway released their results that were roughly in line with consensus, but the guidance was a bit soft, as they continue to deal with a number of issues such as flooding and labour. Nonetheless, the focus was on the acquisition and capital raise, where CleanAway announced they are raising $350 million plus a $50 million share purchase plan to fund the acquisition of GRL, which is a leading composting facility. They raised more money than they needed to so they could fund future developments. Looking to the week ahead, it's very busy on both the equity and economic front. The key focus economically will be on Jackson Hole on Friday evening our time. This is an economic conference where Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will present and the market will be looking for guidance on what the Fed is expecting to do with interest rates over the coming months. 
Earlier in the week, also in the US, we have the core PCE index, which is like the CPI index, but it's the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. It is expected to increase 0.3% month on month, taking annual core inflation to 4.7%. Domestically, reporting season continues to ramp up, and this will keep the team busy as we analyze how businesses have performed over the last 6-12 to 12 months, and more importantly, how they expect to navigate a complicated economic backdrop. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.